Hey, how you doing? I'm Robert Renman and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to play that funky groove that you just heard. But first, I'm going to give you an in-depth lesson on the technique used, the funk strumming technique. By the way, if you have already mastered the funk strumming technique and you want to skip ahead to that section where I teach you the details of that funk groove I played in the intro, you can use the YouTube chapters to skip ahead. Once you master this, a whole world will open up for you where you can easily play funk grooves by Prince, James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone, Steve Ray Vaughan, Average White Band, Funkadelic, Jimi Hendrix, The Temptations, Demeters, and so on. I think this solo playing is a ton of fun and I'm going to take you through all the details needed for you to master this. And hey, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. You can get the lesson files, Guitar Pro, Tablature, and several jam tracks for you to practice with by joining my YouTube channel membership or my website. If you join my website, you'll have access to SoundSlice, which is an interactive technology that lets you view the tablature slash notation and the video sync together on the screen. And you can easily loop any section you want and slow down. Makes it really easy to learn from. So this style of playing requires a 16th note feel. So we can count it this way. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. And when you do that, you should tap your foot on each quarter note. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. To really get the feel for it. For now, we'll just mute the strings by putting the fretting hand fingers on top like this. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. This is the foundation for it all. And we can then add chord stabs, as well as single notes, to make it really groovy and greasy. But we have gotta have that 16th note feel going. Now, in order to play funky, we're going to work on a different strumming technique than what we use when we play chords, you know, this kind of thing. We're doing this instead. So what's the difference? Well, it's the picking hand motion. Let's take a closer look. So what you want to do is get real loose in your wrist. It's kind of shaking water off your fingers when they're wet, like this. It's important to be very relaxed. So if your hand movement isn't loose, you're not going to be able to play funky grooves. Another analogy would be if you have dust on your shirt, you wouldn't brush it off like this. You go a little more like this, right? That's what you want to have happening in your wrist. It's not this. Sounds terrible, right? This. Let me do it real slow for you. There's a little bit of arm movement, but not a lot. Not like when we do strumming chords. It's just a little bit. Most of it is in the wrist. Regarding these three fingers, well, you can curl them in if you want. Or not, it doesn't really matter. Either way works. Now, regarding the pick, well, I like to use the rounded side of the pick because I find it's easier to get an even strum across the strings. The pick will easier glide across the strings with the rounded side of the pick. I also think it sounds better 
with the rounded side of the pick. And I do that almost exclusively for all my playing. I also recommend you use a thin pick for this style of playing because the pick will bend a little bit and it's easier to get an even sound. A thick pick can work too if you have good technique and can hit the string softly. But it's easy to dig in a little bit too much and then you get an, an uneven strumming sound and it won't sound right. A thinner pick definitely makes it easier for most people. So let's play 16th notes again, muted. And I'm going to emphasize the 1, 2, 3, and 4 by just hitting more distinctly. 3, 4. Try to hit only the thinnest strings. We usually don't hit all six strings when we play funk, although there could be exceptions. But try for three or four notes and aim for that when you strum. So we don't want to be doing this. We want to do this. I'm hitting the D, G, B, and E strings. With the loose wrist. Now, one issue that you may run into is that you keep losing the pick or it rotates. So I want to show you how I hold the pick. This is how I hold the pick. I put my finger behind like this, the thumb on top, using the rounded side. So now we can't really wobble too much like that. I find it's difficult to play if you hold it this way. Instead, this index finger goes behind locking it in place and the thumb on top like so and only a little bit is sticking out a firm grip but a loose wrist you can also see that the pick is at an angle it's not parallel to the strings this way Instead, my hand is rotated up like this and the pick will now glide across the strings easier than if I had my hand this way. Another thing to be aware of is that we're not raking. We're not doing this. If you get that sound, you're pushing in too deep with the pick this way. You're pushing into the pick guard too much. You want a gentle touch, distinct but gentle. I'm gripping the pick firmly but I have a loose wrist. And now I'm the drummer. I keep time with strumming and I'll place accents wherever I think it sounds cool. And we can call these chord steps. In between the accents, I play muted notes. The chord I'm playing is an E9 without the root. So then it looks like this. Major third, flat seven, nine, and fifth on top. And I'm barring with the uh, ring finger here. Could play the bass note, the root note here. But it's a bit tricky. And also when we play funk, I think it's often best to leave out the bass note because we have a bass player doing that. Compared to. 
As a general rule, you want to avoid playing the same bass note as the bass player does, because that will lead to kind of um, frequency competition. And by leaving that out, the guitar chords and your playing is going to stand out more. Now that James Brown style groove that I started with is using that simplified E9. And this is how it sounds. We just keep repeating that and it sounds pretty groovy. Now let's break it down and learn it piece by piece. So first of all, we have the E9 here, but we're not gonna play the chord yet. We just keep the fingers there and then we mute. So I just lift them off a little bit so that they stay on top of the strings, but I'm not pushing down. I'm muting this way. Then I put the middle finger here. So I'm muting the low A string and the A string. Now, we are going to try and hit the, the strings in the chord, the D, G, B, and E strings when we're strumming. Another option for you for muting is to put your thumb over like this and mute the low E string. And then you have your index finger touching the A string. So if you if we play the chord, now I'm muting with the index finger and then the thumb on the low E string. And you can use that approach when you're playing. But I find it's a little bit, you get like overtones easily, like the harmonics. So a combination of the two works too. Here's the chord. Index finger touching the A string and the thumb touching the low E string. That works as well. You can try both and see what works best for you. So we have an E9 with no root in the bass. Instead of this, we get this. And we can move this around. A9 and B9. A great chord to know. So let's start strumming 16th notes. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and. And we're trying to hit those three thinnest strings. And I'm putting the accent on the one, two, three, four. I hope it's clear how relaxed my hand is when I do this. You want to move your body to the groove. It helps too. And you don't want to push in too hard towards the pick guard because then you get... It doesn't sound good. You want a light touch but distinct strum. Now we're gonna add the accents on beat one and two. These are the chord stabs. So, one E and the, two E and the. So in between, I mute. As soon as I hit that chord, I release the pressure with my fretting hand, keep the fingers on top of the strings, and then I strum. And again, I try to hit only those strings that I'm fretting with this hand. So again, one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a. And then for three E and a and four E and a, we're just gonna play muted strings. So then we get one, two, three, four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. And then we only have one step left. And that is, after we hit the chord on two, we're going to strum E and A uh as well, unmuted. Then we get this. One E and A, uh, 
two e and a. All right, one e and a, two e and a. The rest are muted notes, and that's the whole thing. Now you just work up to speed. One e and a, two e and a. Now, there's so much you can do with this technique. For example, you could add a little bass line, maybe something like this. Three, four. Or. So I just play a little bass line and then the low A string muted and then the chord stabs. Well, you get the idea. There's so much you can do with this technique. This is just scratching the surface. You want to practice playing accents on any of the 16th notes. And I really recommend you listen to James Brown, Prince, and uh, Parliament and Funkadelics, all those great funk players from the past, especially. They have some amazing guitar playing. And you want to listen for those rhythms that they play. I'm a big fan of Prince myself, and I'm going to provide some more funky Prince strumming lessons in the future. I think he was a master in almost every way. And remember, to get the lesson files, Guitar Pro, Tablature, and Jam Tracks in several tempos, join my YouTube channel membership or my website. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and tell me if you found this useful. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Take care and I hope to see you next time.